one thing you were super early on, and it's the OnlyFans stuff, uh, was going crazy. You're one of the early, early rappers on it. There's a lot, and then eventually, you know, I've seen a lot of other rappers eventually get on to start their own OnlyFans shit, this and that. Like, what made you ultimately want to get into the OnlyFans shit? Shit, because I've been making money off my body and the way I look my whole life. Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem, and you are watching Our Generation Music. And today, man, I got one of the most interesting people in Texas. Oi! <laughs> Motherfucking nah, sauce, welcome, man. Oi, what's dripping? What's dripping? Man, How I you living? I could not have left Texas without the Sauce Walker interview. It's very vital and very important. I feel like I, you know, like it's if, mandatory. Like if it was like Pokemon cards and shit. I'm Mewtwo. Definitely. I'm Mewtwo. Well, I'm first generation one Charles or Okay. I'm one of them. I'm one of the unbeatables. But yeah, I'm Mewtwo. You feel me? Bro, anytime like you I see you over my timeline, I just know it's about to be. The most. When I'm hilarious. on the timeline, you know it's finna go down. <laughs> when South Walk on your timeline, you know it's finna go down. It's gonna be something hey. special and something to remember, like September, November. Yeah. For real. Oh hey, my God, bro. This nigga's driving in the car. He's like, you better shut the fuck up before I get to talking shit about you. Absolutely. Bro, did you know that that, like, I feel like you go viral so much. Like, is any of it like hey, calculated I'm so, I'm or planned so, out? I'm so glad that you said that because you just answered your own question rhetorically. I go viral so much. I'm so numb to going viral, and I've been doing this so long. I've generated a, a, a damn near a Fortune 500 company off of going viral. I've made damn. well over seven, eight figures off going viral. So at the end of the day, it's like it's not necessarily something that I have to mechanically prepare or something that I have to like have necessarily foresight of or or, mm. or, or premeditated thought to strategize or, or create a situation that runs across the uh the, the hearts of the millions. I'm mm -hmm. just a person that just naturally captivate the hearts of millions of people with anything I do, whether it's my conversation, my look, mm -hmm. how I walk, how I talk, the way I rap, just I'm just a different person. I'm I'm like the most interesting man on earth. Like they say on that on that liquor commercial. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Dos Equis, man. We need to swap the Dos Equis guy out for a little bit and put South Walk in there. I think that'd absolutely, be a great. Absolutely, absolutely. I've done some incredible things that that only people from Mount Olympus school was able to achieve. Yeah. You feel me? Shit, owning homes, traveling Multiple the world. Multiple homes, traveling in the world, traveling with the girls. <laughs> Hair and twirls, you know, multiple album sales, millions and millions, nearly billions of streams independently. Um, 32 artists signed to my record label, you know what I'm saying? Well over 50%. Black man. Absolutely independent, young. I'm under 31 years old, born 1990, 90s baby. Um, like I said, over majority, like 60% of the artists that signed to my record label are thriving very well, successful. Mm -hmm. Peso Peso, uh, Sancho Saucy, Sosa Man, Rizzo Rizzo, um, Vucci P, uh, Sauce Wood winning, Free Air Train, the list goes on. You mm -hmm. have a long catalog of, well, you know, Sosa Man and Sancho, those are like my partners. We started this label together, they're my brothers, but yeah. they also are artists on the label just like I am. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just, we, we've been able to accomplish a lot of incredible things in a short, but at the same time, we put is we've been in the game for nearly a decade now, but for the accolades that we've been able to achieve this fast independently off of our own momentum and our own finances and our own our own infrastructure, it's incredible. So it's, it's to most it's considered very fast to get this far. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, y'all y'all doing your thing, man. It's text when you think about Texas, you're definitely thinking about sauce walking. You think about the sauce, man. Like you for sure thinking about that. I appreciate that. that. That's what I strive for. I strive you to be that. Definitely think. I strive about when that. when people think about Texas or they uh, when you want to look think about the ideal of what a Texas person looks like or an artist looks like from Texas, like how you can um, not even categorize, but it just people have people have an image and people have a mm -hmm. a culture and they have a a certain standard that is loved by the masses being from certain places that 
or pinnacles in, in, in hip hop culture, especially for African American people. Like say for instance, if you're from Florida, yeah. it's easily to be identified as somebody from Florida with wicks in their head yeah. or permanent gold teeth. It's easy to identify even somebody from Chicago, the way that they dress, you know what I'm saying? Or New York. The way that they dress all the, their clothes, the jeans, things of that nature. New York with braids, Houston, mm -hmm. Texas braids and face, uh, Dallas with the shades, you know, all mm -hmm. around America, everybody have things that where you can like identify well, certain cities that like added things to the urban culture and the fashion culture and the hip hop culture. And Texas is one of those places. So for me to like accomplish to be one of the re embodiment and the re reincarnations of old Texas flavor and new Texas ingenuity and flavor and creativity and making it today's image, you know what I'm saying? With the sauce, the drip, the jury, the bobos for the girls, all that shit that I made, you know what I'm saying? The sauce. The water change, everything mm -hmm. that I just made, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Too cool for school, you feel me? Nah, I mean, the one of the most interesting things I've seen you do recently was the V Lone backwards shirt. Like, I'm sitting there like, yo, this thing got really sick. I wore my V Lone's backwards on purpose because I dripped the worsts. The worsts? I wore Absolutely. It. Is that a bar you already rapped that before? Nah, that's just some shit I be saying. I got just bars that just come out of my head and they ain't got to necessarily be. You know, I made, I made millions of dollars off of rhyming words in real life, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in my everyday environment, you know what I'm saying, being a life coach and just being able to, you know, be able to give guidance and a different understanding, and, different understanding and direction about how to execute things in life and build things in life. I always just been that type of person. I always been somewhat of a, uh, what do you call Trendsetter. it? Trendsetter. Nah, nah, more than a trendsetter. I'm more like a, a, a consultant and, a, and a, uh, a curator, like a culture curator for oh. a lot of different people in a lot of different walks of life. So my words and my conversation always was, was, that always ruled my nation is my conversation. Okay, man. Have you seen other people wear the backwards V-Lone and everything? Absolutely. Anything I do, everybody do it. If I wear V-Lone shirt backwards, everybody gonna wear V-Lone shirt backwards. If I wear shorts in the winter, a bunch of people gonna wear shorts <laughs> in the winter. winter. If I wear Timberland boots, when I was wearing Timberland boots, with getting them painted, dipping them in pink and yellow and red in the south, you know, we, we from Texas, like, we don't get, it don't snow where we from, so like, Timberland boots, that's not something that was common down yeah. here. And I, I brought that down here, wearing pink, matching my cars with my outfits and shit like that. Putting swangers, 84 in swangers, mm -hmm. the, the old school rims on 300, $400,000 vehicles, and Maybachs and Rolls Royces and shit yeah, like that. that shit's crazy. I was like, like I what changed, the fuck? I changed the culture with that, you know what I'm saying? I've made a lot of people in my state and all over the South that, that, that appreciate that part of Texas culture, whether it be Louisiana, mm -hmm. uh, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, those are other places that like that is, the same rims yeah. as us because they, you know what I'm saying, they fans of our culture. Because that, that very much is, you know, bridging to the gap between old Texas culture, now you and Maybachs with the fucking, like, I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, this nigga went crazy. Yeah, man. This some crazy do shit. It for shit show, because, you know, riding on, you know, even though Ford Giottos, that's dope. That, that, I love Ford Giottos. I, I ride Ford Giottos as, as well, but growing up, that's not our background. That's not mm -hmm. our makeup. You know what I'm saying? Like Florida's makeup is riding on dunks and riding on 32 inch Sasanti wheels and things like that. Yeah. Or uh, maybe like in California, they they ride the spokes and the, the um the old school Impalas, the six folds and things like that. And you know Texas has that same element of a culture with ourselves with the slabs and the candy painted cars, the swangers and you know what I'm saying the old school Lex, but. People it people don't be realizing how much money these people be spending in those cars. Them be two, three hundred dollars, one hundred and fifty thousand dollar cars. Yeah, old schools are extremely yeah, expensive. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? But in hip hop culture and in fashion and in and in music, the perception of that to a young kid from Cincinnati that don't understand old school cars and all he understands is Bentleys and you know drop top Band, Lamborghinis yeah. and stuff like that. It it the perception gets misconstrued to where it looks like people in Texas are country or old school or we not modern or we don't have the amount of money to keep up with the with what's going on mm -hmm. right now when that's completely wrong. So that I have to like be one of the forefronts people to like pioneer that and show the rest of the world that Texas is still even though obviously Houston, Texas and Dallas, Texas is like the second and tenth biggest cities in in America period. But when you talking about when you talking about 
fashion and, and leading the forefront. It's yeah, real, it's, it's New York and it's you're right. When you it's talk like about Atlanta, the forefront. Yeah, yeah. You throw the Atlantas in so the, you're, the LA's, the, the yeah. New York. So I'm trying to make sure that Houston part of that conversation. Exactly. And, and so you want to change everything you're doing is to change the overall view of text. Like yo, it ain't to change it. It's just to, it's just to, it's just to keep it because I, I can't say I'm the first person mm -hmm. to get Texas the its respect and get it. The legacy that we have and, and, and the style that we have, I just recreated it and re, remorphed it from what my experience was with mm -hmm. it and what the forefathers before me died or they didn't get a chance to live in this area, in this generation of what's going on in Houston yeah. and what's going on in Texas. And I'm also the first person to actually like really bridge the gap between Houston and Dallas and bring Houston and Dallas artists together musically and on like social media and mix and merge our styles and things like that from mixing the CJ casinos with the TSF Sauce Walkers, the, the Bugatti seat casinos, the the um the Yellow Beezies, the Trap Boy Freddies, all the way down to the, you know, the Peso Pesos and Sauce Walkers, you know, just bringing all these the Jeremy's and all these different artists putting them all in the same room and mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying making people feel comfortable being around each other and not holding that that boundary that we have against each other in Texas because Texas is so big yeah our state is so big it has the same feeling as driving to a whole nother state driving to another city because the average state the average major state from the next uh no excuse me the average major city from major city in, in Texas is like four to five hour drive. Mm -hmm. In most most states, you drive five hours, is five, four hours, five hours a different direction, you in a whole different state. Yeah. Especially like in the East Coast and the Midwest, you drive five to six hours left or right, you in a different direction, you in a whole different state. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even in, even in Chicago. It's hard to it, If you're not yeah. driving up and down, like yeah. if you drive left or right in Chicago, it's a hop and a skip to be in Indiana. It's no direction you can drive in Texas in a two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour, six hour, seven hour radius and not still be in Texas. In any way you any way you pick it. You drop yourself anywhere off in the Texas map, you drive six, seven hours the left other direction, ten hours the other direction, you probably gonna still be in Texas. So that creates a huge gap in and a huge um distance between the artists artists and our cultures and our background to a certain extent even yeah. though we from the same place we still talk different we walk different and we got different belief systems so you know i was like one of the people that like brought that together and brought put the glue put you, that you're the glue, the glue yeah Texas, you know what I'm me sean cotton and, you know i was there from the beginning when all of that was nothing so yeah. you know what i'm saying that's a very important thing though because i i have heard like the overall thing that people always talk about artists in texas there's a lot of beef a lot of people not fucking with each other and ultimately that just stops the money like you know like that right. just stops the growth of you know what all texas artists are trying to do they trying to put on they trying to put on for their family put on for their state and they're trying to really do something. What? So that's really dope that you know you can be so because a lot a lot of like people that are in a position of power like that don't be wanting to do that or don't even do that. They'd be like, ah, I'll leave mean, that well, alone. you know, I'm definitely considered like a big brother and a mentor and like, you know what I'm saying, one of the the younger the, the gatekeepers and the forefathers of this generation to, you know, stay take the steps and make the mistakes before a lot of these artists mm -hmm. and open up that door and bring that light and bring that opportunity and that 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 spectrum back to Texas and the youth in Texas where people was look, checking in for Texas for not just the older talent that they were used to, but checking in for the the, the youth and the Sauce Twins and all of these these new up and coming artists that's coming up out of this bubble, the Maxo Cranes and so on and so forth. But yeah. at the end of the day, with me being in that position, I always try to exert uh, an understanding between everybody that we shouldn't beef with each other in Texas. We should help each other, support each other, talk like each other, post each other, post each other music and material and stuff like that. And if we are gonna have any type of confusion in Texas, we will never put, put that on the internet and allow that to be shown. I try to do my best to, you know, stand in front of that and keep that from going out of, out of the limits in which it, it, people's lives or, or safety is in danger within yeah. the state of Texas. And I can't stop everything that go on because everything I'm not directly involved with hands, hands on to where I was even there fast enough to where my word could have made a difference after certain things have been done. But mm -hmm. for the most part, Texas is not a place where people have a, a huge amount of beef with each other. It's just that 
you're not so often to seeing some of our biggest stars work together. It's mm-hmm. often it's need it's needed necessary. And me and this, another uh, uh, me and some of the other lead artists that's coming up outside of TSF, like the Fast Lanes, the Jeremy's, we trying to put that type of stuff together. You know Stop, what I'm saying? Man. I always use my position and my power to share my light with the whole state because you know I'm the first, I'm, I'm the one, you know what I'm saying? So I, I do what I, I do what I gotta do. And it's a lot of other, it's a bunch of other great stars and great uh, superstar tennis that's coming out of my state. It's just that we got a different uh, upbringing than everybody else. So like we, not, we don't necessarily jump as fast onto the, the op culture or the beefing culture that everybody is so vast on right now in the rap game, not saying that we don't share it as well, but at the end of the day, it's like in Texas, you're gonna see a lot of, it, we, we don't beef with each other as much in, in Texas, but mm-hmm. we don't rap with each other the way we should yeah. versus in other states. A lot of artists. Atlanta, rap everybody's with each other. like they ugh, all ugh. rap with each other, but yeah. they might have real beef in, the, in in real life yeah, with each other and stuff like that. So that's the difference between where we from. You know what I'm saying? Everybody pretty much got a lot of respect for each other because where I'm from, everybody it, it ain't no ain't nobody weak in Texas. Like that's it's very rare to be weak in Texas. Like that's not like a common thing. So it's like everybody got a certain level of respect for each other. Yeah. Everybody's on their hustle. That's uh, I think I was talking to Ezra about that. He was like explaining how shit is. Like yo, niggas wake up and they attack. They hustle. Absolutely. And I thought For that sure. was dope. Like he was giving me the whole dialogue. He's like, yeah, bro. Like if you play dice, you playing dice all day. If you do this, you pimping. You pimping all. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody got their hustle and they just figure it out all day. It's constantly everybody moving. do what they gotta do and taste it. Like it's a, it's a, it's a everyday. It's it's not because at the end of the day, like a lot of people like to get the interviews and say, "Oh, my city just like everybody else. It's like a ghetto everywhere else. Our city is not like everybody else. Texas and Houston, it's its own special little world. It's Shit. Its own special little. Brother. I mean, every interview I went through, every nigga was sticked up. <laughs> like yeah. everybody got a gun. Fucking like that shit like, is where crazy. We, where we from? Guns is like cell phones. Like that's Bruh, not for- no a gun, not no weapon. Where we from? That's like a cell phone. Like we from a place where like. Three men in the room could have guns all in their pocket, and they might still have a real fade and really fight without they, using their guns. Yeah, that's a, dope though. A, a gun might drop in a fight, and nobody panic and feel like, "Oh, I'm finna shoot the next person." Be- like that type of stuff happens here because we so uh, used to and so accustomed having guns. Like I've known, I've been a person that have a fight with a person that take their gun out their pocket, like just on some. Just kid tripping out, and we could have lost our lives doing that shit. And ain't mm-hmm. nothing to like brag about. It's just like Texas is just different in that aspect. We, yeah. we have a we have a different less of respect when it comes to firearms, even though they are what they are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it and like how you said, it's not uncommon or a, 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 a dude not trying to like stunt or or, or or cap or put on the show because he got a gun. his guns on the table and it's a nigga really uncomfortable sitting with all these guns like it's mm-hmm. like that's it's a gun is a part of somebody outfit here you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> like women and regular people that don't have nothing to do with the streets, streets at all all got guns got guns that shit is crazy man because like man you go to new york not flying. <laughs> nah, not at all. I just left nah. New York. I love New York. I just left New York. I know you was, was out there for what, but like two months? at the end of the day, don't get it twisted, though. New York is real tricky and sticky, oh, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah, they yeah. with that. Yeah. So they square, they with whatever you think they ain't got going on. But not as open. like it's Absolutely. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And I mean, they can't. Yeah. And, it, and it's too confined. You know what I'm saying? Some of the... F- some of the whippery and the firearms, the type of noise that the calibers make, they're just way too much for those yeah. confined areas in New York. Well, you were in New York for a little bit working on music. Three months, like two and a half, almost what, three months. What made you want to stay that long? Like, what, why choose New York? I mean, like, I love New York. To be honest, New York is my second biggest market in my demographics. Okay. Like, all the cities that love me and follow my music, it's always a battle between New York, Atlanta, and um, California. Of course, Texas is always going to be my number one, but New York right now just currently surpassed uh, Atlanta and uh, Los Angeles mm-hmm. being like my top most market where I'm getting the most feed and the most streams and the most uh, reposts and all that from as mm-hmm. far as on my my streaming on my Spotify my iTunes and also on my social media. So besides that as well, growing up, I got a lot of inspiration and energy from New York because that's the essence of hip hop and I'm a real lyrical person. Yeah, and I I got a real love um, for the craft. 
a love for roots. the craft, and I also have a very phenomenal skill set that New York artists and that New York lyricists that only well respect most of most of the most of the world's highest level caliber of lyricists come from New York mm -hmm. first. So that's the place that kind of drawn to my music more so than a lot of other states over a course of years because everybody loves sauce, everybody drip, but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, New York just takes the lyricism side of Sauce Walker and a lot of the stuff that I do on the internet that certain people see as antics or certain people see as, you know what I'm saying, me just being loud or being extra, being a clown, New York see it as drip. They see the sauce, they under, they, have, they understand it because yeah. they created style. They created being different, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So they understand it. So they, 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 they grasp to my, to my style and to TSF a lot faster than everybody else, or or I can't say, if not faster because that's way at the top of America. They 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 hold on to the sauce. Well, it's kind. It feel they feel more like at home with your music. Like right. you know what I'm for saying? Sure, like oh, sure. this can work over here too. For but sure. that, they love the energetic and the drip. They yeah. love all the drip nah, shit too. Because New York is very lingo based. New York mm -hmm. got a lot a lot of lingo. Respectfully, and they love you know clothes. Niggas all love that. to feel fly. Like shit niggas show. not leaving the house unless they. Sure. Shit up to par, like you know right. what I'm saying, nigga. Coming out fresh, nigga. Right, I bought that motherfucker hoodie right there. Shout nigga. out Barter, shout out Barriers, man. Yeah, hottest, hottest hoodies right now, man. That's some expensive shit too. Yes, I'm very blessed. That yeah, that's some new. See, I'm Barter on my gives you my drip. shit. Yeah, he, what's going down? This man, don't be capping. He know the sauce, man. I got my man. cool cars on right yeah. now. Yeah, we gonna get to that because you just went viral for that too. Yeah, we will get to that. But later. we gonna stay on New York and you know lyricism you know, and the respect that you've gotten because you in 2018 got respect from you know. One of the greatest rappers ever. Yeah, Jay -Z. shout out Ho, man. Shout out Jay Z, man. Shout out to the the goat, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only man, Jay Z, man. Somebody I inspire to be, it's just like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, the CEO, entrepreneur, a man that took a little bit of something and made it way more yeah. than everything. You know what I'm saying? And, and created a brand and created a, a lane for itself and just stood on it. You know. And Jay Z respect my he respect my lyricism. He respect my storytelling ability. You know, Jay Z. One of his favorite rappers growing up is Scarface, and, Scar and Scarface says I'm his favorite rapper of Houston's wow. generation. Like from that part forward, he's like I'm his favorite rapper. Like Scarface always tell me that and verbally say that to other people in the interviews and things like that. So like it just it, it was a it was an odd coincidence in the blend how. Jay Z was able to see the same thing in me that he saw in Scarface, and that Scarface also saw in me. So when he heard the storytelling and heard the way I was able to put words together, and you could just close your eyes and vividly see mm -hmm. every detail from everything I said in the ghetto gospel lyrics and other songs that I made, it made him put my song in, the, in his critically acclaimed list that he do at the end of every year yeah. of his hottest songs. And I was like in the second. The first or the second year that he did it, so it was like really, really important. Then. I think it was the matter. first year it was T Grizzly and T Grizzly song that, that was that's going on. crazy. Right. So the next year, my because you know when he do it, he picks like he picked the list together, then he picks his favorite song. Yeah. So my my situation was kind of special because it was like yeah, I was also on the list, but he also like quoted and favorited my song. It's his favorite song no. of that year. So like. That momentum and that push on streaming like kind of changed my life and changed my career and opened up a lot of different doors and eyes and also gave my cult fan base and hers the people that have been vocally pushing and telling everybody else how much of a great lyricist It was easier was. to convince them now. Now, like, they, got, now they got bragging rights. They yeah. got accolades. Been telling y'all niggas sauce right. was that nigga, you know right. what I'm saying? Because I'm independent, so I, I still got like platinum plexus, like collaboration songs I did with like my brother R R I P X X and Tassion. Yeah, we're getting that too in a little bit. Right, you know I I got songs Travis Scott, like I got songs that you know go whatever stuff, so, but I don't really like too much brag or post about those type of accolades because my goals that I want to achieve is like far greater than that, and I'm independent, so it's like I want to achieve them a certain type of way. But me getting that respect and getting that those moments of of honor from lyrical gods of the of the heights of the Jay Z's, the Jada Kisses, the Busta Rhymes. Now, you know what I'm saying, the Fat Joes, and all, and also the the lyrical gods from my city. You know what I'm saying, that I grew up and respect them. The, my my top five outside of 
the few people that's, you know what I'm saying, that's not from Texas that's in my top five, the Lil' Kiki's, the 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 Zeros, the the, the J Dog, you know what I'm saying, uh Paul, Big Pokey, like these are all like lyrical legends and, and icons where I'm from, like all coming up under DJ Screw and these mm-hmm. all these people, even in Dallas, Big Chief is so many, it's so many legends and icons that really respect what I've done and respect the direction that I chose by staying independent and doing it a certain type of way and just sticking to my guns and, yeah. and also helping so many other artists. Even yeah. with me having the light and having the, the moment, I'm still spending so much money and opportunity and sharing my platform and opportunity with all of these other artists, making them big artists and household names as well, like not being stingy with the ball. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like, it's not too often that you meet a new Master P in this era or uh, Rick Ross, somebody that's an artist but also as a CEO and an entrepreneur at the same time, that's also respected in both lights the same, mm-hmm. like Birdman or something like that. And so um, these are this is the company you, you're trying to keep. Like these are people. Yeah, I don't really. I'm like, not. I don't really too much care to chase. You know, being the hottest artist or the biggest selling artist or the biggest. Um, you know, like whatever. Most like, number ones, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. All that like I'm not really like that's cool, that's nice, but you like might, that's not really. You what might I'm get that through an artist that you sign. Absolutely. Or two of them, or Absolutely. one, whatever, like, you know, like Absolutely. So I see, I see. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur and a businessman, a multifaceted one well, of that of so many sorts. I own websites, tech companies, da- data mining groups. You know what I'm saying? They put together video games and create different online analyzing uh, anal- analytic systems that, you know, find different ways to target and market and sell uh, sell different revenue from different little products that, that float around from overseas. I got so many different just things that I invest my time and my money into, cartoons, uh, real estate, marketing for different artists and social media marketing. Uh, marketing for different social media platforms of celebrities and uh, social media influencers. Mm-hmm. I have a different company with my part with my partner, Big Trill, Big Trill Productions, uh, where we do um, we do marketing and advertisement and content engagement amongst celebrities and fans and also celebrity to celebrities by taking the time to reach out and talk to different celebrities, connecting them through their social media pages mm-hmm. at times that they don't have time to check their DMs or talk to each other through social media. It's just a different way to keep everybody in the web and everybody can, you know, utilize each other. So now it's like how you talking about going viral. It's a little bit easier and a little bit better to go viral because now we have the control and the power to post something on multiple celebrities platforms. accounts and uh, platforms at one time. And you know that's it's, it's just a way of just you know everybody working with each other and helping each other grow yeah. through social media. And it, I, I do a lot of other things with the music industry like that. This kind of takes my time away from even chasing being the hottest artist at the in the yeah. game at the time. Even though I do what I do and I keep my fans satisfied, I I dropped six albums this year. I dropped six projects this well, year. Four in a day, right? Yeah, four four in a week. Four in a week, in a, week, a week. Four in a week. Four in a week. Man, so you know, it's a hard job, working. but we drip. We got well, to, all right. Well, all that being said, I, I kind of want to just know where this come from. Like, what made you want to go? Like, how early into your life did you, you know, you knew you were like, yo, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like, was there something else you wanted to do before this? Or you always knew, like, yo, I'm, this is what I want to do? Um, to be honest with you, um, like, I honestly... I've been rapping since I was five years old. Oh, shit. Like, I, I recorded my first song in the studio when I was like, I think I was six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 1996. Uh, and if you're from Houston or Texas, Houston, especially the south side of Houston, and you know this studio that I'm finna say, it's um, in the King's Flea Market. It was called Diamond Cut Studios. Yeah. It was in King's Flea Market. Wow. King's Flea Market is a legendary flea market in Houston. It's where Lil Flip shot his video, I Can Do That At, or... I think Riff Raff, Slim Thug, and Paul Wall shot a legendary video is there as well. It's uh it's on the south side of Houston. It's a flea market where King Johnny started his jury. Not T V Johnny, but the original Johnny. King Johnny, he started his jury company there. Mm-hmm. And also there was a studio for the community come to record it in for the free 90s. and everything? Nah, you had to pay. But the thing about it was I was such a phenomenal kid freestyler rapper that was just known for being in random hoods and places in the city freestyling rapping and I was fat as a kid like my name fat ever growing up so I was fat I was, yeah Wait, I was, what I was fat as a kid growing up I was, I was fat so all the Houston legends is fat I got fat ever tattooed on my arm 
Wait, years. when did you lose the weight? Like what age? I lost the weight in like middle school. Okay, okay. I, I had to, you know, I had to get right. It's time to be a player when you get in hit, middle schools when girls <laughs> yeah. looking cool and girls and cool. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, man, you, I had to do what I had to do. I got fat now. Yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> nah. But now it's over. I'm but um I'm getting I picked up a yeah. <laughs> I picked up a huge fan base quick as a as a kid in my city because I resembled a lot of the stars that was there. So at the time Big Pokey had allowed me to freestyle mm -hmm. in one of their sessions and they recorded the tape and then my career and my, my love for being a rapper began from there. But outside of that, as far as being a businessman and an entrepreneur, I just never wanted to have a job. I never had a job in my whole life. I have, I probably made my first Two hundred thousand dollars or something like that when I was like 17, 18 years old. So it's like my mind and my perception of of hustling and, and, and being able to speak things into existence and, and speak money into fruition from from premeditated thought. I just been on that for a long time. So mm -hmm. as a kid, I just knew I could never be a person to work for somebody. I could never be in a job clocking in providing a service for someone waiting to receive a check that's just paid to me by the the by the judgment or the litigation of somebody else's opinion of what my value and what my worth is, is yeah. for my time I feel like my value and my worth is worth way more than somebody else can adequately pay me for. And I mm -hmm. always understood that as a kid, I always felt that the people that have the things in life that I wanted, like, you know, when you're a kid, if you would drive by and they press bingo, like bingo, mm -hmm. like I was always the kid that's like, dang, okay, if everybody pointing for the most expensive car on the freeway, who is the person that owned the freeway though? Like I, I so you're was, always curious. My oh. mind was just always different like that. When mm. everybody wanted to be the Lamborghini, I wanted to be a toll road. You know what mm. I mean? So my mind just looked at the world different. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. If, once I picked up that perception, you, and you feel like that was more of like maybe like your your living environment or where you grew Absolutely. up. Absolutely, for sure. For she sugar to sure. <laughs> Because sure. ultimately, that's you know that usually happens. Some people like, and actually, from you know, majority of people like, yo, you're growing up, your living environment has pays a huge plays a huge part on like you know really who you are. Like, it's actually crazy. Like you know, we don't really talk about that a, a lot in society. Like you know, like yeah. bro, like I remember growing up in Jamaica and shit. Like nigga, I was sleeping on a fucking bed with like me, my uncles and cousins. It was like five of us on that shit. And I was like a little badass nigga. I was, I was like a little kid pissing on that motherfucker. They was all bad as hell at me and shit. Like, oh God, the niggas was bad. But I was a little kid type shit. But it's like, you know, like you're, you're, um, you know, you're, you're, you're ultimately like your upbringing is a very important thing that, you know, we kind of like don't realize till it's older and, you know, you're older in life to like handle like certain shit like that. Absolutely. But you know, my background and my I grew up like again very special, very different than the multitude of kids that was around me, especially growing up in the nineties. The average child in the ghetto in a black single parent home was growing up with just one parent mm -hmm. and the one parent usually it was the mother. You know, the 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 average ghetto child story is growing up in a single parent home for three or four kids with just you and your mom and yeah. You probably the oldest brother or the or the or the, the the youngest child or the oldest child trying to assume some of the responsibilities for the father not being there. For me, it was completely opposite. It was I had my father, but I never had my mother. My mama mm -hmm. was a drug addict and a stripper, so it was like periodically I was around my mama through small little fragments of time in my life, but I never was raised around her. I never really just grew up full 365 day years around her. And I, and if I was to add up the full years that I was around my mom, I'm 31 years old. My mom died when I was 24, 25. I probably was around her for maybe five years of my 25 years of living when she died. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So That's crazy. my mama never told me or taught me about putting on lotion or shave your arms, brush your teeth. I never got a chance to experience none of that, none of the, the motherly love and care from yeah. a woman. I, I was always raised up hard, harsh, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So 
I, my experience was just different growing up in the hood. And my father was an athlete, you know what I'm saying, that, that worked very hard and, and had aspirations to go to the NFL or to be a a, um, a professional wrestler, like, you know, tried to make it to the WWF, but it didn't work out for him. He never yeah. made it all the way to the top. He tried to make up his own federation after that. And, you know, it was before social media and all of that was prominent, and it was so easy to create a company or create a new idea, a new niche, and it blow up like that. This is before TikTok and MySpace and all mm -hmm. of that. Like, so I, I, I developed an understanding, though, of film, photography, media rooms, and, and, and taking your film into to a media station and editing and making a video come out and putting it out on a local or TV station and shit like that. Like, I picked up skills like that for my dad. But, so he was a wrestler and everything. Right, and he was also an athlete, like trying to be a football player and mm -hmm. shit, but none of that shit worked he, out. He ended up being a security guard. You know what I'm saying? That was like the, the me growing up, in my from a from a from a kid from mm -hmm. five years old to a teenager after you know as any parent do a parent try to achieve their dreams and still go for it but when it don't work out you gotta go you gotta and go on, with parent yeah. BNC you gotta move on yeah so from that point forward my father was just a security guard and he married a, another woman that was my stepmom and she was a beautician so I grew up rough in the hood and my daddy a security guard yeah you know what I'm saying I never I never had a, a head start or a bunch of money or advanced so I always just had to figure it out. I had to freestyle, I had to steal, I had to connive, I had to conspire, I had to read, I had to achieve, I had to, you know what I'm saying? Figure mm -hmm. out just different ways. Push yourself forward in life. Absolutely. Cause you know. That and my mama from Chicago and my dad from Houston. So that was also another little curveball in my life as well. Cause like it'd be times where my mama probably come and pick me up from Houston for my dad and act like she's about to start raising me or about to like, you know what I'm saying, take her, resume her job as a mother, then she'll drive me all the way to Chicago and then I might end up in an abandoned drug house for, for three, four Damn. weeks and not seeing my mama and stuff like that. And I'm just going through experiences and calling some random woman, my auntie, that don't, that's not, she's Spanish and I'm black and I, she, I don't know her from a can of paint, but I've been just living in this woman house for four, five weeks because my mama just dropped me off here and I don't have nowhere else to go. Damn. So. Things like how, that how, just how, made me look at the world from a different bird's eye point of view. Yeah, it's crazy these the, these little things how crazy they shape and just they it can also put you in a whole different path. You I, know? I appreciate it though. I mean, I appreciate all my all my experiences. You, you um, used it to you know fuel something else. Look you at know? me look, now. Look at you now, man. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, can't. You can't. But that, pressure make the diamond, so you can't shine if you ain't been. But you no made ground. a choice though. Because other Absolutely. people will have that happen and then they'll and make break a choice. Down. And you know, For like, sure. that's a testament to you as a person. You can go a whole it different direction, like, oh, now I'm a victim and this and that. Not saying that, you know, stuff didn't happen, whatever, but like what else? What's next? Like, you know, what else, what are you gonna do about this situation? Like, what's the point of complaining if you're not gonna do anything? But with all that, you have a new opportunity with, you know, everything you've been, you're about to be a father. Absolutely. Uh, I'm already a father, but I'm finna be a father again. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I never disrespect my daughter like that. I already have a beautiful daughter already, and now I'm finna have another one. So this finna be my second time at being a father, just the type of father that I am. Like again, I live it, I live life different. So I'm not the type of person that feel like that part of my life is just all of my fans' business or that yeah, part of my you life. Don't that. Yeah, you don't post that. Yeah, and then at the same time, I have a little girl, so at the end of the day, my little girls are precious and they're beautiful and I, I already have relationships with beautiful women. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna have beautiful children and I wanna protect them and shield them as much as, they, as I can because mm -hmm. I'm already dripping a certain type of way that nobody dripping. So at the end of the day, I feel like I want them to live in a perfect peace, harmonious, perfect life. That, Utopia. Exactly. As they should, the life of God is as they should, and I'm, let me deal with all the hard work and all the pressure. That's what I do. I That's how that. I do. What are you most like? Because this is a whole. You're about to redo it again and everything. Like, what are you most looking forward to? Like, to being, you know, being a dad again. Uh, to be honest, Liz, I'm I'm looking forward to the motivation to get my money. To be honest, I'm just be all the way real. Like, I'm not one of the type of people that just like to say the thing that seems to sound right to say for for the liking of what sounds politically correct, I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. So in actuality, my kids 
and anybody's kids, just like they're going to leave love and care, they're going to need nourishment and they're going to need finances so they can have the opportunity to catapult off to be whatever they want to be in life comfortably. And you can't always expect your children to do the things for themselves that needs to be done for them to fully have the opportunity that could be set out for them when if they had the opportunity set out for them and they didn't have to subconsciously think about how are the lights going to get paid for and am I actually going to have a ride to my cheerleading practice or to piano practice? Some of these people, is, like myself, this was an everyday reality. Mm -hmm. How can I think about being a football star if I can't make it to practice? How can I pick up learning a, 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 a trade like playing the piano or um, or um, whatever different trades that schools provide these days, computer computer, computer skills, um, welding, whatever. So mm -hmm. be happy if you don't have to even speak in a different language. If you don't got the time yeah. and the mental capacity to even focus on that because your everyday lifestyle, when you leave outside of the schoolhouse, is survival, then you can't fully, you can't fully get to your full capabilities. So you're not growing. You're, you're not, not growing you're properly growing. to your full yeah. capabilities. And that's, that's the a very reality important I come thing from. too because we'll, we, so like I'll in life, in life we'll have like just people in general, like in life we'll have like things that like we're not handling, right? We're not taking care of and we're not growing. We want to grow, mm -hmm. but bro, how are you going to grow if you haven't handled all those other things? Like you're not even ready for that. Exactly. Like it, and if it does happen, you're not ready for that. Or it's like, bro, then you're not growing because you're not handling these other things. Bro. Absolutely. That's like putting a that's like putting a seed in the water, but and then trying to put putting seed, excuse me, putting seed in the soil. And yeah, you water it from time to time, but you didn't even take the time out to own the land that you planted the seed in, in the first place. So for number one, you put in useless time and effort into nourishing some ground that you don't even have the owns the ownership and the mineral rights to fully take it, to fully take leadership and direction of where this field and where this plant and where this tree is going to grow and, mm -hmm. and to protect this tree the way it needs to be protected because of somebody else with more money or with a different plan wants to build a building on this same land where you've been growing and nourishing this beautiful tree and this beautiful flower and this beautiful garden, but you you were just worried about the and the, the the initial the initial thing that you're supposed to do with plant with growing a growing a tree or planting a flower. You wasn't thinking about owning the land so you could forever have this and you can use this land and use the knowledge and use the nourishment and use the beautiful things that come from this this garden to take care of others and mm -hmm. take care of the people that you know what I'm saying the, the the fruits of your labor as they say. Yeah. So you know what no, I'm saying? 100%. I just think different. No, hundred percent. I fuck with how soft walk is thinking. It's great to uh sit down and actually have a really good conversation with somebody. Um always good. Sometimes the conversations don't niggas be like not trying to really talk about real shit. Like you know. Oh man, I ain't no rapper, so you, I don't <laughs> shit. Whatever. Yeah, sauce ain't no I'm rapper, a, man. I'm a preacher and a teacher. <laughs> oh God, well, I'm a leader. You okay? Well, let's go back to um, New York, right? You were in New York. You were making music. You did work with the legend Buster Rhyme. Absolutely, man. Shout how out was to Busta that? Buster, it was monumental. It was, it was, it was a, a, a uncanny, an un, unforgettable moment that's gonna forever register a place. Not only in the legacy of me becoming and being the sauce walker that I am, but also just in my mind and in my heart from a kid to be able to compete against the likes of the greats of people like Busta Rhymes that you actually looked up to and you actually absorb certain inspirations from his style, like the, the, the loud colors and the loud energy in the videos, the hairstyle, it's so much of me you know what I'm saying? That it's all Sauce so Walker, but certain shit that I that I like that Busta Rhymes has done my whole life. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just like Cameron, just like all the legendary um, New York rappers. Not 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 just legendary New York rappers, but back to Texas. Like majority of majority of my inspiration come from Texas and New York, mm -hmm. but it come from Texas first because how I got even put on to New York was Texas, DJ Screw. Mm -hmm. DJ Screw, I, first time I heard Busta Rhymes, do you really want to party with me? Yeah. Let you see what you got to see oh was DJ God. Screw Bro, screwing it up. Crazy you know what I'm saying? I heard DJ Screw screw that up on the tape and that's what made me go check in the Busta Rhymes and look for him on MTV, Yo Raps and all that shit in mm -hmm. 1993 when I'm a kid. Yo, 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 yo. So that's the thing, like I really was on Busta Rhymes 
before I had the opportunity to work with him. But the, the beautiful thing about the story is the reason why I was able to work with Buster Rhymes is because I'm his son's favorite rapper. Oh, word? Hey, yeah, this shit was brazen. This was blew my blew my head. I'm in New York. I'm working. I'm working in the studio, legendary studio, car studios, a legendary yeah. New York studio. I'm up there working. I get the phone call like, yo, Buster want to work with you. He's going to come in tonight or tomorrow, but he got a show. He got an appearance that he got to make tonight, but he don't know if he's going to be able to come. I'm like, that. that's that's what's up. All right, bitch, so I said, I'm up here working. Boom, Buster come down. He come in the room. As soon as Buster come in the room, the whole breath out the whole room is taken out because, like, he Buster Buster. He a general, so he come mm-hmm. in like a big homie should. And he like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm here to work with Sauce Walker. I want to work a certain type of way. I love everybody in the room. We finna have fun. He made a bunch of jokes. Everybody had fun. And then he started correcting the order in the room because he was like, yo, I want to record. And I'm finna record type of way because I got to work with Sauce Walker. Like, and then he started telling me the story. So as we talking to Bobby, he telling me the story. Like, yo, like... Nigga, you you the champ, nigga. I'm like, what you mean I'm the champ? Be like, boy, you my son's favorite rapper. Like, it it is it, wild how how much my son's inspired by you and look up to you and love your music and love the way you rap. But when I look at you, I still see a lot of me. So I start getting onto you from being at the barbecues and I'm chilling with my sons. He's like, you know how I feel when you at the barbecues with your sons mm-hmm. and they talking about their favorite rappers and their favorite sports athletes and you want to feel cool. You know what I'm saying? You 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 pops and like he is. Your pops nah, a dope. Your to... pops a legend. Yeah. You feel me? This is Buster Rhymes. He's a god. I got this man got songs with Jenny Jackson. For real. This man brought, help help bring out the Fuji's and the Nazis and things of that nature. This man has done things that people can't even fathom it to do. The, the world is not even set up to do some of the achievements that Buster Rhymes has done perform with Madonna's and things like that. Mm-hmm. So cultural to, icon to, as a Jamaican too. Absolutely. Like. So for his sons to be having conversations at the barbecues about who they favorite rappers and who they like the most on the internet and social media and then Sauce Walker and he in the back like Man, I will tell Sauce Walker ass up on the song. Y'all talking about Sauce Walker the bad then, so, like, cause he thinking I'm just you feel me, young, loud, crazy, whatever. So now his sons really put him on the essence and put him on the bars and the lyricism, and now he like, whoa, okay, this what y'all like about this kid. Okay, this why y'all like Sauce Walker. Oh, oh, all right, boom, boom, boom. So over time, come, over time, his sons' relationship and love for Sauce Walker. Also brought a closer relationship and bond between Buster Rhymes and his sons. And yeah. that's, that right there, Means that a lot. hit me. That touched me, you know what I'm saying? That hit me in the chest like as a man, like damn. I would have never in a million years thinking that everything I've been through that somebody on the level of Buster Rhymes, kids at his mansion in New York living their best life, arguing about mm-hmm. rappers, like we arguing about boxers, mm-hmm. uh, Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence or something like that. They yeah. arguing about Sauce Walker and other rappers and how they feel like I'm the best rapper and the most underrated rapper of this generation. To his sons, I'm that to him. So it meant something to him to do a song with me and challenge me and rap against me, bar for bar, lyrics for lyrics, to see who the best. It was more than just, oh, I want to do a song with you. You got to understand, Buster Rhymes is a god and legend, just like a Jay-Z, just like he told mm-hmm. me. So I was walking, I'm at a point of position in my career where if I'm a rapper with somebody, it got to make sense. 100%. He doesn't need to do this. He don't need to do this. He ain't have to do no song with me. He yeah. ain't have to leave his concert and stop his time. Yeah. To, that's that's a big nod to you and just what so you're that, doing on your path, you know? I was very, very... That, that story, I feel like that story is something that, you know, people need to know and experience so they can get that that that, 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 that motivation. and To even re- get that feeling yeah, for themselves. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? To be a kid, at, like I said, coming from the 90s, coming from my generation of hip-hop world, we really we ain't had a computer and a cell phone. We really used to get out of school and wait for 106 and park oh, and get man. our snacks from the stove and then sit Bro. in front of the TV. Everybody outside hooping, fighting, and playing. But we know with this particular two three hours from Rap City to basement to 106 and park, we gotta stay in the house. Oh, we gotta by. see who was start coming out the back. Number we one countdown. We need to see the new jury. It was the such countdown. a it's a moment. It's such I a I came from that. Yeah. It's you know like so it's that, like such a like important cultural moment. It's such a good reference point because like it's like I, I I'll be telling people about that. Tyler Crater had one of the best interviews I've seen like all year and in a while because he talks about reference points and like how it changes certain people or it might have you connect with certain people. Like it's a big part of our connection. Like okay, like I'm on this, I'm on that. Oh wait, 
you was on that as a kid, da da da, this and that, or like a certain way you talk about certain shit, like yo, nah, this I speak just, like this it, because it's it's just I'm like the from. anime wave and the, and, the, and the cartoon wave, and, and, and you know what I'm saying, the way that everybody all of a sudden is trying to adapt into the love of anime and pop culture and mm-hmm. cartoons. When it was a point in time where coming from the ghetto or coming from the hood, people used to laugh at people that got past a certain age and still had a love for cars yeah. and Pokemon. Like, grow up. Like, anime, all of that shit. We all watch Friday and all of that shit. But see, again, even in the rap game, I was one of the first people to usher in anime and a love for cartoons and a love for video games, a love for Dragon Ball Z and Yu Yu Hakusho and mm-hmm. Trigun and you know what I'm saying? Classics, and like man. real live classics, North Star and you know where it really started at the beginning of the anime. You, you see these on, real like now, out, out, outside of me, right. outside of me, I would have to say is like Chris Brown and Chief Keep, like Soft even, Walker, like tr- even a little bit more we, underground, Xavier Wolf too. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, like on the underground side, yeah. right, for sure, but like. Like really being the embodiment of cartoons and anime and getting jury and making mm-hmm. songs and shooting hot dudes and Naruto runs and hitting shadow clone <laughs> jutsus and shit like that. Like I'm just thinking about I'm all really the videos. one of the first people to do that shit and and, and still get the love and the respect and the acceptance of a real from nigga. the hood and yeah. the real niggas because in the hearts of real niggas, y'all really like this shit too. Mm-hmm. But it's only a small group that's alpha males that's okay, that's able to like what they able to like and still get the respect amongst killers, robbers, and, 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 and gremlins, yeah. or just ignorant people. Well, I think you know, that comes people to People that the, just got their own opinion. I think that comes from more of this like authentic, authenticity. Absolutely. Like, when you look at, so you know you're not doing it for no other reasons because this is me. You know what I'm for saying? Sure. So it's you have to respect that. You okay. should respect that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you 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 gotta respect that. And other people that are really a killer, he's not like, like nigga. That's me. Like that's that's how I am. They're gonna respect another. Like oh, I see you. You're you're you. I'm me. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So like it's a hundred percent thing. Um, real gonna always recognize real. True. Real gonna always recognize true. And spill gonna always recognize spill. You spill me. Dick. Yeah. Preacher man. Um, you worked with one of the most, you know, legendary artists to have lived, and, and he, you know, he had a very short career, but accomplished a lot of things, man. Absolutely. Man, XXX Tentacion. My baby boy, salute to the X, man. Man, R. I, R. I really want to know, like, how salute did that song come about, Chloe, man? We love you, baby. You say what now? How did that song come about? Again, like, like I say, so I was walking my story is very funny. Like, it's so many different stars or different walks of life of people that love me for different reasons, that they be fans of me or grew up on me, and I don't be realizing how long, again, I've been in the game. I've been in the game eight years. Mm -hmm. I came in on the rap game professionally around like 2013, 2014 to the masses. I came out locally to the masses before I went to the penitentiary around like 2008, nine and stuff like that. So, with the internet, like again, I had a video that went. I had a video in two thousand and eight or two thousand and seven that had eighty thousand views and got deleted, and then got another sixty or fifty thousand views back then. Mm-hmm. So back then, that was that was at a time when YouTube were. 10,000 views is like a hundred. Crazy, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Like, we still in middle school. We we still in, I mean, not middle school, excuse me. We in high school, just getting out of high school, just graduating when people still got a, you know what I'm saying? I still got little brothers that still in the seniors and got to skip and use the code and go to, you know what I'm saying? Look up your videos in, in class and stuff like that. So I'm saying all that to say, I end up picking up different levels of cult fan bases early that spread it out way far and way vast for different things that I've done. Mm-hmm. So the people like Chippy Red, XXX, Tentacion, Wiz Khalifa's, uh, my brother Sosa Man with Lil Wayne, uh, me with uh, NBA Young Boys, the, the, the Three Threes, um, Uzi, it's, it's a lot, a lot of artists. Yeah. That when I was very very young in my career, they looked they were looking to they you. They was looking at me. They was they were you know, they were reaching out. They 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 appreciated the movement, the songs. They they was inspired. They liked it. Whatever they fucked with. The, they was everybody when the, when the jit first came out and two the jit is quitted. And after that, 
through years after that, me being arrogant, me being energetic, stand up, don't give a damn, like all of that shit, it made all of these different people fall in love with me. And a lot of people met me first. Because mm-hmm. when I first got in the rap game, I already had money. When I was I was 23 years old with three, four hundred thousand dollars out the streets, I'm dropped S550 Benz, jewelry on. Everybody remember how Sauce Walker first came in the rap game, first videos, white girls, Bentleys, Panoramas, next videos, my Benz is big boy Benz, S550, jewelry, rose gold. I've been wearing rose gold before anybody was wearing rose gold in the rap game currently. But at the time I wore rose gold, it, people didn't even know what rose gold was. They thought it was copper. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Some real shit. Like the only people that had rose gold in the history of Drip before me was Lil Flip and uh, T.I. when they was beefing. They had both of had rose gold. Said T.I. told Flip, I'm, I'm going to show you what $30,000 in your mouth look like rose gold. I, I was a student to that. I was there. I, all of them different moments in Houston, I was a part of all of that. When Johnny Dang was like still selling t shirts and chips and, and, and jewelry in the corner. When, mm-hmm. you, when you can go to Johnny Dane to get a white t-shirt, I was there. You know what I'm saying? So I seen, and I got in the rap game early, so I picked up a vast amount of fans and a lot of artists, even the Yachty's, all type of people. You know what I'm saying? And so many people I worked with, I did music with, some of them I, I began a relationship with. Me and the Migos, we started out together, a bunch of different stars. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that with X, X was the person that, he blew up so big, so fast, and he blew up from jail, and everybody was knowing about him from jail. It was like, I was doing that anime shit hard as hell. I had the ninja video I already out. I had the video where, where I had the sword, and I was doing the, I was running with, through the trees. I was uh, cutting the, the fruits with the ninjas, doing all that. I'm not knowing. X and them had already been on all of that before he went to jail. Him and Slump, Slump, uh, Ski Slump, Mask. Ski Mask. They was on all that before, I, before he went to jail. So, boom. Bro go to jail. I mean, bro, get out of jail, and but I'm seeing his videos with the anime and all that, so I'm I'm checking up with him. I'm like, okay, you fucking anime, you fucking Naruto. So, okay, all right, I'm finna check you out. They drawing you like Naruto. So, okay, boom, I'm checking them out. The situation go on where he with a with a the, the gay the, the the bullshit where the nigga snuck him on stage or mm-hmm. the whole shit. Okay, now me honestly being honest, me being childish how I am on Instagram, I made a post about it because I was I was already. I was fucking with X on some anime shit, on some mm-hmm. on some Ninja Warrior shit, on some I'm a and he was he was getting that rappers, I was getting that, he was just doing a bunch of he was, we was doing the same shit and I didn't know that he even knew who I was and I didn't give I didn't care, but I was a fan of what he was doing as far as like this little nigga got nuts. He he talking about this. He you know how X first came out? He yeah. Was he was loud and very vocal and opinionated. Shit. He was talking this shit. So I was starting to like the I was starting to like the little nigga. I'm like, okay, he he anime, he different, but he not weak. He different, but he ain't soft. He not no hoe. So in. when they got snuck on stage, I was disappointed. And I was not only just disappointed in him, I was more or less disappointed in the company that he killed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like through life, look at all the different experiences that we're seeing right now uh, and also in time previously to right now, what artists going through, being a rapper is one of the most de- dangerous jobs in the Very world. Very much. You know what I'm saying? Not only with it being the most dangerous jobs, it's a job where everybody around you gets to live a very leisure pleasant, easier going life. Yeah, you might pick up some extra duties and chores or responsibilities or time uh, uh, management or whatever an mm-hmm. artist may have you do for them. But at the end of the day, if you're blessed to live around a successful, a truly successful artist, your life is abundant and it's better, especially if they have favoritism and love for you. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I was very confused at him being the type of person that he is, like me being the person that I am. The same way, if I, if I go on stage and somebody run up on stage and sneak punch me from the side, there's people that love me that's gonna find that funny and still gonna be like, what the fuck, how you let that happen? Are you tripping? They gonna say something about it. Mm-hmm. So, so me, I'm like, damn, I, I made an Instagram post on my story and I'm like, damn, X, you, you, you supposed to be a ninja. You supposed to, you, you let this man, this dude let this man come on stage and try to X you out. And me saying that, bro jumped in my DM quick. Boom. I'm talking about 36, 30 minutes. I probably wasn't even 30 minutes, 36. I'm like, what the? So I'm going through my DM, bro. He, my DM, he damn big bro. That's how you do me. 
I like I nigga, I look up to you. Like we really look up to you. I fuck with you. Like me and my partners been we been riding around jamming sauce for years, bro. That shit that happened on stage was some whole shit, nigga. I this 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 and he started explaining how I really went. And then so then from that point, I start giving him my advice and my opinion. I didn't go back on my word. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, look, this is why I feel that because I've been paying attention to you. I know you. I ain't know. I probably didn't go to the shit right now. But it ain't even a point of doing all that. But no, I ain't. Just keep you know continuing the story. Yeah. I posted this shit a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I posted it a long time ago, whatever. But that story brought us together close because the advice and the the things that I told him kind of made him switch his, the group that was around him a little bit, and he started having more more real security personnel around him, and he switched his friends up a little bit. But you know, kids still kids; they do what they do. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, he was a god, and he was a great talent, and he was a genius, and he was able to see the sincerity in what I was trying to tell him. He was able to see yeah. the, the sincerity and the truth. You meant no the, harm, but yeah, just the, but it's just the, the truth. It's, 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 it's real love, it's hard love, and he respected that. Because as you see him on the internet, he wasn't no hoe. He was he was a man. He wanted to fight. He wanted to punch. He he not scary. He not scared. He, he move around by himself. He was a warrior in his heart, and he was a warrior in real life. That's why the world is drawn to him the way that he is. And I'm the same thing. I got the same spirit in him. I got the same fire in me. But you having that's what's called talent. That's what's called gifted. That's what's called having an advantage, you can still have those things, but not have the smarts and the cunningness and the intelligence and the ingenuity to respect the environment and respect the playing field that which you're up against. Because you could be the most talented and have the most ability like a, a, a LeBron James versus a person that doesn't have the same stature like Steph Curry, but Steph Curry has a better skill set mm-hmm. at a certain time that could still win him the game and the championship. And I try to teach that knowledge to young kids or younger artists that re- I feel like we resemble each other or I find out that she was a fan of me and, 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 and you fuck with my my movement and what I've done and, and now that also that made me also a, a fan of you or I probably even got on however it happened. That's how that situation happened with me and X and it just made us get extremely close. Like, And then y'all did the song? Yeah, it went for now. First we start hanging around each other for like two, three, four months. Like he flew to Houston, I flew to Florida. And we flew to LA, we was all together. Then me, him, and Trippy got together and we started playing Naruto every day. And I'm just like giving them guy. I'm just giving Y'all was them. playing like y'all was out there playing Naruto? Yeah, I posted all this shit on Instagram. Oh, like, shit. I used to whoop whoop their ass on Naruto all day, him and Trippy Red. Like they both good though. Mm-hmm. They both very good at Naruto Ninja Storm 4, but I'm I'm like a god on it. Like I'm I'm as you see, yeah, like this is my life <laughs> fighting game. I don't, I don't play Madden, I don't play 2K. I don't play sports games. I ain't gonna sit up here and, and sweat with you. And you when you want to play sports you game, you want this is a video game. This is virtual reality. This is meant for some shit that you can't do in real life. life. You want to play sports and hoop? Let's go put some clothes on, go get on the court, <laughs> and go sweat then. <laughs> oh God, I like this. You want to play football? I'll do all that to just get on the field and do it for real. You want to punch? And you want to play? You want to do some punching, and boxing, and Mayweather? You see, they don't make fight night no more. Mm-hmm. You ain't make that no more. Say go you outside. Know, you want to do USC? <laughs> you US free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna play on this game with this hot dude and all that. You feel me? Yeah, yeah yes. I like that. So I, I'm, oh, uh, man. I, I'm very good at those type of games. You know what I'm saying? So, and that made them, that what X, I mean, Trippy Red, that's a, a different story, but that's my little brother too. Love him just the same. Shout out Trippy, you know man. My old, both of them niggas, like, I love them both. Them my little brothers, they're very loyal. You know what I'm saying? I love them to death. I'm, I'm riding for their names for forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's dope, man. The song is very dope. Um, I feel like it fits you perfectly. Yeah. The sauce. We were we, we actually got another song too. We actually did two songs. I only just released the one and the other song is just like just some vocals. I'm just sitting on forever. I don't even know if I even care to like try to release it or whatever, but it's just some shit I got. You still remember the day I recorded that the, the Yeah, the it was song? special because it was like um we also had another person that was on the song. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's very big. It, it was it was uh, the DJ that's on the song. This Carnage. Well, the, 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 they put the beat together. Carnage, like Carnage. Of course, everybody know DJ Carnage. You know what I'm saying? How big DJ Carnage is. But it was kind of a a crazy story because it was like. DJ Carnage is somebody that got a bunch of love in Texas, and people think he's from Texas, but he's not from Texas. He's from like a bunch of other places, but. Like he really helped Texas music a lot. So 
I was like, this was my first time like really working with Cornish. And I was like, look, Cornish, I think like this would be a big, big opportunity for me, you, X, and Trippy to get on the song together. And like, you know what I'm saying, make a big old, old deal about it. And Trippy was like, bro, I don't want to get on the song, bro. I don't want to do that, bro. I want to go do something else, bro. Y'all yeah, Trippy, let's go to the other studio. So me and X just ended up doing the song by itself, and that song ended up being what it was and it, what it is and ended up being history. And then me and Trippy pl- ended up making yeah. other songs be history. But That's a dope I, moment, I, I man. I got a plaque off that song. But yeah. I don't really like to, I don't really like to post or talk about the accolades off of that album and that song because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, that's his passing. I, I mean, I don't just know if I ever am going to care to do that, but no, I, I respect that. did very well. And my song's like one of the leading singles on that album, so, you know, that yeah, was my I, blessing right there. I respect that. Well, you got your own label. You know, you've had it for a while, um, very long time. Um, I want to know, like, what do you look for in artists? Because you've signed a whole bunch of people. You just signed um, Sa- Sauce White. Yeah, little sauce wife from Japan. From Japan, uh, you told me earlier you got you know sauce in the islands. You got sauce everywhere. Like, what do you look for in a person that make you want to, you know, let them join the sauce? You know, be a part of the sauce. Be the sauce. Um, a a, a true a true divine understanding and love for the sauce first, because the sauce is not just about music. It's not mm-hmm. just music. That's a form of it. It's it's something that's very important. It's something that's in it, but it's something that's also very minute and very small in the lifestyle of sauce. Like sauce is a religion for us more than just a style of music. Like it's mm-hmm. a, a every way. It's a way of life. It's an every way thought process. It's an every way belief system. It's an everyday rationalizing system. We rationalize every decision that we make pertaining to how we are indulged in the sauce. So at the end of the day, like. Somebody that want to join my record label or join my family, I got to know that they had that real divine love and understanding for where we are first, more than just wanting to be another successful artist. Because, again, I'm a successful businessman, and the people around me are also successful businessmen Mm -hmm. outside of being musicians and and, and artists and record label owners as well. So it's like... um, I like for people to be larger thinkers than just looking at the, just being a rapper. Exactly. You yes. So, I get it. I get it. One hundred percent. I mean, you got to look at this like, man, and you know, being a rapper is like I think the most successful ones usually are like ones that look at this as a platform to do other things. You know, not just only. A I love it though. It's, 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 it's great, and it's not just about the money and stuff like that. You know, it's about helping people and changing lives and. Yeah history of the culture, you know what I'm saying? Make, making sure that you adding things that you believe are the rightful rightful representations of what you love and where you come from or what mm-hmm. you believe in to represent it properly so other people reciprocate it properly and they don't take what they receive from your culture or from your history or from what you left on earth. They don't take that and misinterpret it to somebody else and, and now whether it's about the legacy is not it's not upheld to the right standard or promoted right. It's not forget about the legacy. It's a misinterpretation of the knowledge and the information because mm-hmm. that information could have created something else greater. So I'm, I, I be thinking like that. Oh, I feel My that. 100%. Um, you know, one thing you were super early on and was the OnlyFans stuff. Uh, was going crazy. You're one of the early, early rappers on it. There's a lot, and then eventually, you know, I've seen a lot of other rappers eventually get on to start their own OnlyFans shit. This and that. Like, what made you ultimately want to get into the OnlyFans shit? Shit, because I was been making money off my body and the way I look my whole life. It made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like something I should be doing. Sound like nothing. I, ain't nothing I never did before. <laughs> so, what do you? You know what I'm saying? I just kind of understand that. At the end of the day, music and music videos is still fantasy. A movie is still fantasy. Looking at an athlete do a physical accolade or a physical feat that you cannot physically do yourself is a fantasy. When you see somebody dunk, you get your adrenaline rush and you jump up and you do all that other stuff and that is be, that's bottled up and that's sold to you in a consumption form for you to spend your money on it. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, 
if if me having a certain uh, a certain ability and a certain blessing that was God given to me from birth, and uh, and also having an image that women like. It just made sense. It's the same thing that I do is shooting videos, and I'm just shooting some other videos. It's all videos. It's all movies. It's all films. Uh, uh, Playboy uh, did it. I'm a Playboy. You see that shit? I'm a Playboy, I'm a Playboy myself. You know what I'm I love how the Playboy uh, book yeah, is just man. right there, man. Right next to the album. I right yeah. now, Drill Spill, man. That's crazy, though, because like, right you know, now, you, Drill you, were, Spill. you were doing it, and I'm sure people at the time probably like, Nobody, no rappers was on there for sure. No, when you, when you were doing There was no rappers on none. there. It None, was, it was just me and then Safari. Yeah. And then, this is how when Safari had hit me up, asking me about it before he went with his move. He hit me up like, man, what you think about all that woo woo woo, man? They trying to, and it was crazy because they offered something to him that they never even offered me. Mm -hmm. They offered him, uh, I think it was like 100% or, or down to 10%. I think OnlyFans take 20% mm -hmm. of everybody uh, residual revenue and they offered him for promotional value. 10% or 0%, so he get to make all of his return. They ain't even offer me that shit, and I'm the one to put him in the other rap orders on made, it. Just but it's cool, the I still made, I made my million, so I went, I ain't tripping. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I was able to have the foresight and the vision to create another platform that's just as good as that, that's not my own platform. So now I have my own website as well as that, like I told you with tech, I have my own website called onlybaddies.com. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, onlybaddies.com, it's a spinoff to onlyfans.com and we already had this website being premeditated, put together and you know what I'm saying, structured for like a year, a year, way, way, way prior before uh, OnlyFans start making those bulletins and those statements about changing away from adult content and trying to go uh, mainstream and things of that nature. We was already trying to create something that was more content creator based that moves more to the liking of the content creator more or less than the, to the content consumer because the content consumer usually just changes their mind after they receive the content that they purchase mm -hmm. because it's a it's 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 not a black market but it's just not an everyday market that every it's, it's something a, that hasn't it, existed, I can't say that because really. it's a super duper everyday market yeah. but it's a brand new platform yeah it's something that's never really existed it. before it's, it's new. a brand new way of doing it so yeah. with that being said I just created something with a, a few guys that I partnered up with and this um you can see it right here, onlybaddies.com, real website. And um, it's a regular website for all streaming platforms. It don't have to be adult or nothing like that. It could be anything. It could be whatever you, you know what I'm saying? You could be a cook on there. You can be a boxer. You can be a, a teacher, instructor. You can be. You can have your own television channel on there. Only it's Baddies. Onlybaddies.com. I just partnered up with Black, uh, we just hired Black China and put her on a, a, a board of, of, of directors and things like that. We have now help us with the brand. Dope. It's, it's me and two um, black women owners of the brand. Oh, and fire, man. Beautiful All women, black, beautiful all black, but it's, black owned. Yeah, right, right, right. But you know, it's, it's it, we definitely have some other races of what? people that's involved that's mm -hmm. helping us. So yeah, I, I don't want to just put that only stigmatism on them. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a everybody company for everybody. Okay, man, I Absolutely. like that too. Um, well, one of the most interesting too, right? You were super early on it, and you did it, and you were fearless with it because, like, you know, a lot of times rappers want to do things. Hey, man, I made a me, I made two, three million dollars two years straight off of feet. <laughs> <laughs> you think I wasn't fearless, nigga? You? I don't know too many people made millions of dollars off of socks. Only Hanes. Oh, oh God. Nah, cause like you know, you had your music shit going. You're getting all this praise. Like for you to have done that, I know that. Was there any like, was like, were you ever like, you know, shaky about the decision, or it was just like, nah, fuck it, let's I mean, go. Like I Be said, honest. at the end of the day, I'm an independent artist. I'm an independent entrepreneur. Okay. I don't. My business relationships with companies like the marketing side of Sauce Walker, the advertisement side of Sauce Walker. I do marketing and advertisement for growing companies like build, uh, excuse me, uh, credit credit uh, repair agents, um, local real estate agents, real estate repair, real estate refurbishers, lawyers, uh, um, uh, sports agents, you know, things like that, a and R's, new record label owners, car salesmen, things like that. I do marketing for independent company owners, mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, advertising or brand ambassadoring for like Fortune 500 companies that necessarily have to worry about the 
the clashing image of mixing different worlds or different markets that necessarily okay. don't match it with each other's market. Mm -hmm. But the companies that I do market for, the things that I do on social media, all the OnlyFans, the only badges and stuff like that, it helps them. It makes sense. And it, it, it's so you feel like everything was in. gonna coincide it, anyway. I mean, it still could. It's still it's still a risk. It's still something that people could not want to be associated with. Or some people, because so, in a rap world, like like it's a funny, it's a funny. Um, it's a funny tweet, dog, that I always laugh about, bro. I love tweets. <laughs> it's a funny tweet I always laugh about that one of my fans sent me like, bro, I don't even want to put the rapper's names associated with this particular statement, but it was like, bro, you one of my favorite rappers, just like so-and-so and so-and-so, you in my top five, but you messing up my love because the, I don't have to go on Twitter and see my top five rappers private parts naked, <laughs> but I got to see Sauce Walker. <laughs> and it's like, my thing is like, bro, you don't got to see it. Don't go on my Twitter. That's not where you need to be at. That's for a different marketplace. That's not for music no more. Do this you put in the bio, not over. for music? You I, I mean, all the time, you know, I always market it away for women on there, whatever, so be it. I always do that. I always make sure My Twitter is for I'm the very trans. I'm, I'm very transparent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very transparent about the shit that I do, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it you know you Well it worked out for you. Yeah, for sure. It I worked made the out millions. For you. I'm, in money. The, I'm in it for the millions. I yeah, made the millions. Man. You know you get I mean? money, you know. I'm sure you you got multiple houses. You're happy. The most important thing is that nigga, you happy, you doing whatever you want to do. I think everybody should just focus on that. Um how do you go about picking all the girls though? Why, what what are you looking for as far as the girls? That man, I, I got to tell you, like a player told me, man, you got to like the girls that like you, not the girls that you like. You feel me? That's where everybody get it wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? They lose a few trying to get number two. You know what I'm saying? But you just got to get the one that's for you. You know what I'm saying? You get you a weed and that's the way to be. You know what I'm saying? You got to mm -hmm. start with one before you're done. Then you get you two. That's how you come through. But when you chasing a few that wasn't even meant for you, mm -hmm. then that ain't the place, that ain't the way to do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you know preach. You got preach. You feel me? You got to like, I like what like me, man. That's where everybody be getting it wrong. Hey, with, you man. know, I ain't going to lie. They chase what everybody else want. I chase what chase me. That sound like some Jamaican shit. I like who like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you sound like you my uncles. You can't, you can't go wrong standing in the shoes that fit you, man. You oh, know God. What I'm it, hey. And you just you know modify what? that. You, you, ever heard of, you ever heard of customizing the shoe? Uh-huh. You feel me? <laughs> Nike.com with these yeah, bitches. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Nike ID, man. Yeah. yeah. You customize the shoe, I customize her do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's that's. That's what I rather. That's yeah. what, you know what I'm saying. That what makes sense to me. I believe in investing in women and, and people that invest in the people that invest in me. Seeing the potential. And when you go to jail, who your partners lose your number and forget how to send the cash up and send money, and you can't blame them. Sometimes you can't blame them because mm -hmm. some of the people that you asking for money or asking to look out for you, send you a letter, they ain't have enough money to buy a pen before you went in. Mm. And that's just the hardcore reality. But a woman always has a way and always has blessings in life because the world is catered to women and children. So at the end of the day, but a man always has to work and, and sacrifice and put everything along with his thinking and his ingenuity in order for all of it, for this system to work the way that it works. So at the end of the day, I just find my divine position and I play it accordingly. Well said. Play your role, nigga. Play your part. <laughs> real, you Very simple, bro. When nigga, nigga, what about nigga purple? In this world, you supposed to have which was what's for you. I'm a yeah, person man. of abundance. I like a lot of tennis shoes. I like a lot of cars. I got over 12 cars. You know what I'm saying? I'm a king. I'm a, my body was built differently than other people's body was built. Some people jump high, I hang low. That was just my that was just my that was my blessing in life. So I can't be with one woman. I'm meant to be with a, with people that with the group of women that's meant for me, and we were happy the way we be. You know what Sauce Walker needs, man, that I, I think I think is gonna be crazy. We need Ryan Seacrest to partner up, and here I say partner with Sauce Walker and get Sauce Walker on E. We need it, we need to get <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the Kardashians are about to, you know what I'm saying? They're about to get out of here. 
It's almost done. I think yeah. we need to make Sauce Walker. It's a lot of people want to see me on TV. You man. got to, bro. Have, it, have Love and Hip Hop ever hit you up? I feel like they... I was supposed to be on Love and Hip Hop. You know, Love and Hip Hop had a whole Houston sequence. Mona Scott, shout out to Mona Scott, shout out to the whole beautiful team over there that, that produced <laughs> it. Because they definitely, definitely gave me and my twin a huge opportunity. They was going to bring the whole Love and Hip Hop thing down here to Houston. And they was going to revolve the show around the Sauce Twins and the Charlo Twins. So, like, it was gonna uh, be. A, I'm already thinking about it. It was gonna. <laughs> it was fucking comedy. It was. It was gonna be dope, but at the same time, like again, Houston is too much for TV. Like it's just yeah. too much. You know what I'm saying? It was a. It was a big old ordeal that went wrong. It got violent, and this is not like other cities and states. Guns are legal here, so you can't have a film set without guns on it. It don't go oh, like that because wow. guns are legal. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna tell people that they legally can't have their gun on the set when they're legally can. So now it's like you got to go through the city and the state to get these different permits and legally binding documents that probably prohibit someone from bringing their firearm on okay. set or bringing oh, it makes around. Sense. Then they're going to try to beat you with that with five-star five level security that got a certain level of sanctions that goes past that. So now you're dealing with a war that TV didn't want to deal with. So we end up losing the show as a whole, as a city, because you know they could just kind of have foresight that this is not going to be like... The other places. They yeah. Kinda, you know, they, okay. they, they fight and get a little extra down here in Texas. And it was the girls, though. It wasn't even like nothing that the boys did. But that shit would have been, now that I think about it, it would have been fuck. legendary. It would have been iconic. <laughs> yeah. It would have been iconic, though. It would have been iconic. It would have been the best one for sure. But Holy the thing, fuck. That would have been crazy. It's too that much. Was, there was Jay's heart. Oh, you know what? Here. I think that was a matter of fact. Matter of fact. And shout out, shout what out to the my. Fuck? Yeah. But so it was okay. going to be going down, though. It was going to be going down. Well, yeah. all right, man. Uh, we've been talking. This is amazing. We've been talking for a while. I feel like Talk about Let me say one thing before yeah. I go. Drill Spear, man. My album out right now, oh, man. Sauce Walker. Go get on my album, man. Drill Spear, New York album. First Houston artist to drop a Drill album. Yeah. Two New York albums. I got the second New York album coming out, too, man. New South City, man. New South City, too. Shout out to the whole TSF roster. Man, Rasta. I forgot about I that. I know I'm such an interesting person. You want to ask me a whole bunch of other questions. Nah. You, you, no, no, no. I asked what I actually... My phone died, and that's what I actually forgot about. Because that like surprised the fuck out of me when I first heard nigga you on a drill beat. I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah. what the fuck? I thought I wasn't hearing shit right. I'm like, this nigga rapping on drill shit. I like, can rap on anything. I can rap on drill. But what made Zodico. you want to go rap on a drill beat? Because that's so like because, different. Like I was saying earlier, I respect the art and the craft of lyricism. I, I get a lot of love and respect. I've had record deal offers from Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Two times. You know what I'm saying? Two record deal offers from New York. And that's a, a known story all around New York about me, you know what I'm saying, with that. And that was a blessing and a lesson. And also, for you know, me, you don't regret that, right? At all. Okay. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But not, let me, I'm not saying that in effect with any, but that's respectfully. Yeah. But like yeah, I said earlier, Jay Z is a god. Jay Z is a, a beyond the icon, but I'm the type of person that understands that for me to be a Jay Z, I can't sign a Jay Z if I want to be Jay Z. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I got to I gotta, I gotta kick the rocks a little bit different, but I'm going to get there. Oh, God. But with that being said, my experience and me going through those things from New York, it gives me an even deeper passion and respect for New York. So now when I drop a New York album, I feel like when I've dropped the New South City too, because I already dropped New South City, that's my New York critically acclaimed album that people from New York love me on the lyricism side that I dedicated straight to New York. Mm -hmm. Shot videos on Brooklyn Bridge, shot videos in all the different hoods, Bushwick, uh, Bed-Stuy, whatever, Harlem, whatever, the first time. Then now this time around, with me dropping the, the new South City album again, and I got Busta Rhymes on it, uh, possibly uh, Dave East. Or I'm, I got different songs just floating around it. I would just, damn, should I use a Jim Jones song? Should I not? Like just making my mind up. Mm -hmm. And also with my work, I feel like I'm kind of only catering to the older fan base of New York and New York hip hop with me working like with West Side Gun. Shout out to my brother West Side Gun, the whole Griselda West Side featured me on two of his albums in the past three years. I've been featured on two of his albums. So all of those different things is putting more fire and more momentum on my New York fan base and my New York love. But so it's like I can't leave out the youth because the youth don't necessarily want to hear that boom bap shit. They don't necessarily want to hear the lyrical mm. rapidly rap shit. They yeah. want to hear a nigga get on this drill and spill, get on this drill and kill. And I'm a nigga to do the I splash in real life for real. So. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put the feathers on there and 
we gonna splash on, well, on the drill shit. Yeah. And, and, and merge the cultures. Merge Texas and, and New York together how it's supposed to go. Go get this, man. Go so check this for this the out. youth. You know what I'm saying? Drill spirit, that's for all the young, the young G's, the young gangsters everywhere all around the world, from the East Coast to the South, East to West, South to With East. With ASAP Ills. All the real Shout rights. Shout out ASAP Ills. Shout out to ASAP Ills. You know what I'm saying? He put together all the beats on the album. He put together the whole project as far as like listening to the beat, picking, selecting songs, telling me what's right, telling me what's, what's wrong, what's really drill, what's not drill. Shout out to my brother for that. I Shout got another Ills, one man. coming out with Dan Drill. New York legend. Shout out to Danger, Dangerous Danger, Griselda Danger, Buffalo Boys, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The new South City 2 album that's coming out right after that. So I'm dropping two New York albums and then I'm gonna drop Ghetto Gospel 3. You know what I'm saying? That's it. But I, for this year, 2000, and what's the, what year this is again? I don't know. 2021? <laughs> 2021. Yeah, I dropped six <laughs> albums this year. Six albums this year, independent. You know what I'm saying? We get the millions, we spit it. Let's go, man. Okay. My artist, as far as the label, my artist probably dropped 40 albums or 50 albums this year, man. Peso, Peso, Rizzo, Rizzo, Rico, Blizzy. I got artists from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Jamaican artists. Uh, I got a Jamaican artist from Yard Man, Vucci P. I got a Japanese artist, Lil Sauce White. I got a uh, African artist, African Kills. I got a uh, Puerto Rican artist, Rico Blizzy. Um, and all my American artists from, you know what I'm saying, like that I stated yeah, earlier. So we just, sauce is, we sauce talk, ain't playing with y'all, man. Knocking those down, man. Texas, man, independent. Well, we usually do this to close it out or anything. What's your message for our generation? My message for my my message for, for this generation is 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 just to challenge reality. Challenge the reality that was given to you and make a reality of your own. And maybe that might be the real reality in the first place. That's probably like the most best one I've ever heard. I've done this for a whole year. I'm the drip god, man. Cha to to challenge me. reality. I like that a lot. South Walker, man, we need you on TV. I'm, I'm, I know that day is going to come. Ryan Seacrest. Oh, hey! Yeah. Drip! <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm Thank saying? You, man. Hope y'all learned something today. Man. Ryan, here. Yeah.